Once again, it's time for an episode of Vintage Audio Review, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about this Sansui Model 800 AM FM stereo receiver. This sold between 1968 to 1971 at a cost of $260, which would be about $2,100 in September 2023. It was rated at 22 watts per channel into 8 ohms at not more than 1% THD and 28 watts per channel into 4 ohms also at not more than 1% THD. It was one step up from Sansui's bottom of the line receivers in that time period and it had an option for a wooden case apparently. This came to me via my good buddy Ian and he got it from somebody who bought it new when they were in the service on base and they kept it all these years. At some point there was a lightning strike nearby and the receiver stopped working and they just boxed it up and as far as I know it's been in a box for 30 or 40 years. When I got it, it had the original box and all the packing material. It is possible that there was a little surge that overstressed that diode at some point. There was another problem to figure out why the signal was so low coming out of it. So you'll see what I found and what I did and eventually I got it working. So there were some adjustments that I did on this while I had it apart just because I thought it would be interesting to check and one of them was to check the bias currents and there are some videos about doing that on YouTube and in some of the forums. The way I did it was to remove a speaker fuse and connect a ammeter to it and then I adjusted for about 20 milliamps for each of the sides. There's also an offset adjustment and I set that and it was off of maybe a volt and a half so I adjusted the offset voltage and I believe that's set for 27 volts. But the bias current, at least on the video that I saw you the best way I found to do it was to connect an ammeter in series with the fuse and then go ahead and adjust it to 20 milliamps. Now during all my testing this thing never got really hot at all or barely warm you could barely tell it's on so it must have been a good adjustment. Here is a close-up view of the Sansui Model 800 and we'll start over here on the left this is our power switch, our headphone jack, this is our speaker switch which has positions for off, A, B, or A plus B. Our bass and treble controls are here and the left and right is uh, done by the inside uh, knob there, the black one. Our volume control is here, a balance control is here, and here is our selector switch with phono, FM auto, AM and auxiliary. Now this little guy right here, it says speaker fuse and this has a circuit that will cause a lamp to come on if one of the speaker fuses is blown open. So that's kind of neat. It actually doesn't work in this particular unit. The bulb is probably burned out. Here is our tape monitor switch, our stereo mono switch. This is our loudness switch high filter switch and this is the MPX noise cancellation switch for the FM tuning, our tuner selector and you can see this nice kind of backlit display uh, for the channels and here we have our tuning indicator for AM or FM and in the very corner hopefully you can see it, it says power so there's a little lamp that comes on when the power is on. Now if I turn it off to auxiliary you just see the little power light, but the display goes off the way this one is wired. This obviously is the rear of the Sansui 800. And starting on the right, we have our FM antenna connections here, our AM antenna connections here, plus this is our AM antenna rod. We also have an FM local distance switch, which is this guy right here. We have our turntable grounding lug here. The main fuse, which is a 3 amp fuse, is right here. We have a switched out AC outlet here. And we have our two speaker fuses, which are 
I believe 2.5 amp fast blow fuses. Speaking of speakers, here are our speaker connections for speaker B and for speaker A. And they're the kind where you push down and insert the wire in. This guy right here is a DIN jack for tape recorder use. And our tape monitor connections are here. Our auxiliary connection is there. And here is our phono connection. And this guy right here is our FM MPX separation adjustment, which is all locked down. So I didn't bother to try adjusting anything. And behind this metal cage here that is vented are the output transistors. Here is a view of the Sansui 800 with the top cover removed just to kind of show you the technology and what's going on. You can see our power transformers here and uh, the power supply capacitors are there. Our AM and FM tuner circuitry is here and here is the actual uh, tuner there. And you can see our output driver boards here. Unfortunately, they're hardwired. Um, they're not socketed, but at least you could remove the boards with a little bit of work. And you can see the output transistors here. We have a voltage selector switch here for 220 or 110 right here. And the most unusual thing that I've ever seen inside a receiver, in fact, this is the only receiver I've ever seen this, are two spare light bulbs there. It actually is labeled as spare lamps for the uh, dial assembly over here. That's extremely unusual and very much appreciated. So here is a view with the bottom cover removed and you can kind of just see more of the circuitry and how it was put together. This is the diode that I replaced at the very start of this project that was shorted and you can just kind of see some of the potentiometers and there's a little preamp board here and this kind of just gives an idea of the technology that was used in the build quality of the Sansui 800. Right now we're looking at the power supply area of the model 800 schematic and remember it came in with no life to it and this fuse was good right here. I started measuring for uh, voltages all around the diodes and I did get voltages here and here that seem reasonable. However, this voltage right here was missing. I ended up measuring this diode and it was shorted. Now this SW-05-02 translates to an NTE or ECG-116, which I had. I replaced it and then the receiver sparked to life. However, the sound was very, very weak, and this is what it looked like when hooked up to my analyzer. The Sansui 800 came to me as totally dead, and all the fuses were okay. The reason why it was dead was because D004 in the power supply was shorted, and once that was replaced with an NT116, it came on and I was able to check the functions of the tuners. They seemed to be working good. And the only other problem was it didn't have hardly any power out. So I've got the volume cranked about two thirds of the way with a large signal uh, going into it. And we're only getting, what, 374 microwatts for the left channel and 4.51 milliwatts for the right channel. And that's into 8 ohm load. So there is something that is causing both of the channels gain to be low. I'm guessing that it is some open electrolytic capacitors, some small ones like one microfarad size inside the uh, preamp circuitry. And I will show you what I found as I figured that problem out. I had a one kilohertz signal going into the auxiliary input. I had uh, cleaned and lubed the switch here for the selector switch, made sure that was good. I also toggle the tape monitor switch and the high filter. I move all the switches just because I figured they hadn't been moved in a while to see if anything happened and it didn't improve. What I end up doing was measure the outputs for both channels at this point right here and for the other channel right here. I think we can get them both in. So I measured here and here and indeed the signal looked pretty good at both spots. So then I decided to go over to the volume control right here at the wiper of the volume control on both of these. And basically I didn't see any signal whatsoever. The volume control was probably at about 
two thirds of uh, maximum, but I didn't see anything come out of them. So then I went over to the balance control to the one end of the wiper here and here. Also, nothing coming out of it. So I started looking at the switch right here and there is a little key that tells you this is the tape monitor switch. And so I got my scope probe in and found out that I was not, I was getting something coming in, but not something going out. So the, the contacts here were both uh, just corroded or oxidized, most likely oxidized. I was able to get some cleaner lube in there, work it, and then it came back to life after I did that. I also uh, cleaned and lubed all the other switches that were on the unit, as well as all the pots, and the thing worked fine. So that was kind of what was wrong with it. Normally, when you toggle them, uh, when I first got the unit, that would, you know, improve it or not, but there was nothing happening when it got toggled. So apparently it just had too much oxidation built up, but it works very good now. Here's our standard THD SNR plot at one kilohertz with the volume control set to give about 29 dB of gain. And the Sansui 800 is putting out about five watts into eight ohms. Our THDs are pretty good. They're less than 0.06%. And the SNRs are about 66 dB. And the THD plus noise is better than minus 62 dB. Now, in case you're wondering, our harmonic level is this guy right here. And you can see that the even harmonic is higher than the odd or third harmonic, which is kind of what you would expect from a tube amp. However, I have seen older solid state amps like from the late 60s in that uh, a lot of times their even harmonics are a bit higher than the odd harmonics. Here we have the frequency response of the Sansui 800 with it putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms and the volume control is set for 29 dB of gain. Also, I have adjusted the bass and treble controls in order to make this response as flat as possible. The specification is that from 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz, it should be plus or minus 1 dB, and we're meeting that requirement. Over here at 20 kilohertz, we are at maybe 3 tenths of a dB. We're also as high as uh, 0.4 dB up here in this area, and at 20 hertz, we're only down maybe a tenth of a dB. So the frequency response looks pretty good once the bass and treble controls have been adjusted. Right now, we're looking at the THD SNR plot at one kilohertz again, except this time we're putting out about 19 and a half watts into eight ohms. Our volume control is still set for 28 dB of gain. We're less than, we'll say, 0.2% THD, and the SNRs are in the low 50 dB range. You can also see all the little harmonics here as well as the high level. This is a 120 hertz power supply hum here and you can kind of see that's that's kind of high there at minus we'll call it 55 dB or something like that. So what I'm going to do now is slowly increase the signal going into it and you'll see that over here and we'll see how much power we can actually attain before we hit the 1% THD limit, at which point we should be at about 22 watts according to the spec. So I'll slowly bring it up. You can see we're starting to approach uh, half a percent THD and it's looking really bad. And we're at 20 watts. We're still good, still less than 1%. We're approaching 1% and so right there we're just a tad over 1% and we're at 22 watts. So I guess it kind of is meeting its specification. Our SNR looks like crap at 39 dB, as does the THD plus noise. And just for grins, we'll see what the harmonics uh, look like. So this is a plot of our harmonics at clipping. And right now you can see that the third harmonic or the odd harmonic is higher than the second harmonic, the even harmonic there. Here is the Sansui 800's 
multi-tone test response, and it's showing a distortion-free range of between 9 and 10 bits. This plot shows the crosstalk, or the channel separation, as the Sansui 800 spec calls it, for the auxiliary input. Now the active channel is putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms. The specification at 1 kilohertz is better than 50 dB channel separation, so that would be right here, and we are indeed better than 50 dB, so it is meeting that requirement. Here is a plot showing the Sansui 800's output impedance from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now, there is a specification for damping factor, and it is 60. If we use the value, let's say at 1 kilohertz, of 0.25, we get a damping factor of about 32. So it's about half of what the specification was. This plot shows the THD versus frequency for a couple of different output power levels, and that's into 8 ohms. And minus 7 would indicate about 19 watts into 8 ohms, and minus 9 is about 12 watts into 8 ohms, and minus 19 is about 1 watt into 8 ohms. So basically, our higher power levels, uh, these are the two worst right here, and those have a distortion that is... Uh, approaching 10 at the low frequencies. Now, once we get beyond maybe, uh, what is that, uh, 50 hertz, it's looking at least uh, at least 1% THD. And the same for this power level right here, which would be the uh, my 12 watts into 8 ohm power level. And once we get about 30 hertz on those, we're way down in the, the THD, we're at maybe 0.3%. So as we get higher in frequency, the distortion goes up. At worst case, it's 1% with the higher power levels. This plot shows the effect of what happens when you turn the loudness on or the high filter on. This would be our loudness being turned on. We have the boost up to 10 dB at the low part of the band, and then we kind of flatten out here in the middle of the band, and then we have a little boost of maybe 4 or 5 dB here at the high end of the band. And here is our high filter, and it starts affecting things at maybe 200 hertz, and slowly by the time we're at 20 kilohertz, we're down about 8 or 9 dB. Here is our THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the Sansui 800 putting out 5 watts into 4 ohms this time. You can see that the SNRs are around 63 dB. THD is about point. Uh, we'll call it 0.12% or better. And the THD plus noise is around minus 57 dB. And the volume was set to give about 29 dB of gain. So it looks like, at least as far as the THD, under the same conditions as the 8 ohm load, the 4 ohm load condition is a little worse. Here we have the frequency response of the Sansui 800 putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohm loads with the gain set for around 29 dB. The bass and treble controls have been adjusted to give as flat a response as I could really get. And if you look at the area from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which would be right here, we're down maybe as much as, oh, right here, maybe half a dB and as high as about 9 tenths of a dB. So it would meet the plus or minus 1 dB requirement. Right now we're looking at the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the Sansui 800 putting out about 25, 26 watts into 4 ohms. And you can see our signal to noise ratio is not very good at around, we'll call it 37 dB. And the THD is hovering right around 1%. Now, the spec limit into a 4 ohm load was 28 watts at not more than 1% THD. So, once again, we're a little under the weather on the 28 watts. I'm going to go ahead and back down the power a little bit and see where it starts looking a lot more decent. So, once again, at around 21 watts or so, maybe we can go up a little bit higher. Um, yeah. You know, 21, 23 watts is probably where this guy is going to be rated at. It's pretty much uh, not a lot better than 
into a NATO mode. But right now, it's looking pretty good at about 21 watts into 4 ohms. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz using the phono input, which is a moving magnet phono input. And we're measuring the output at the tape monitor output. You can see our THD looks really, really good at 0.005% max, we'll call it. The SNRs aren't bad for phono. We're at about, oh, we'll say 57 dB of SNR and THD plus noise is around minus 58 dB. And the gain of the phono stage is about 38 dB. Here is the frequency response of the phono stage of the Sansui 800. Now I'm measuring out of the tape monitor output, and we're going from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The specification, once again, would be plus or minus 1 dB, and I do have weighting, the RIA weighting applied, so ideally you would have just a straight line down zero. It doesn't look so bad once we get to, oh, what would this be, about 50 hertz or so. We're under 1 dB on the high end, plus 1 dB on the high end, and we're centered at 1 kilohertz, and then at the high end of the frequency band, we're down about 4 tenths of a dB. So it's got some issues here at the low frequencies below, say, 40 hertz, 50 hertz or so. For my listening tests, I connected the Model 800 to my Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers, and I used my Surfans F20 as the music source. I listened to a variety of my normal test tracks, and I did have my realistic APM100 power meter hooked up so I could get an idea of how much power it was putting out. I never really exceeded 10, maybe 12 watts on occasion, and this thing just sounds really good. There's something uh, about older Sansui receivers I found that they just have a good sound. It, uh, you know, if I A-B them with something modern, I still think this may sound a little bit better. But it does have a nice sound. There was plenty of bass and highs in the mid-range. You know, despite the uh, anomaly of the frequency response not being flat, a couple times I switched on the loudness just to get that little extra bass and it, it, it did that. And it just was pleasant to listen to. The AM tuner works great. The FM tuner works great as well. And it just has the tuning indicator. There's no stereo light or anything like that going on. You just turn the tuning uh, knob until you get the maximum signal. Pretty straightforward. There's just a one meter. So it's a very easy receiver to use. It has a phono input. I did not listen to the phono input. I tested it. It had a big spike of bass at uh, you know 20, 30 hertz area, but once you got past that, it looked fairly good for a phonograph stage. But all in all, it did a really good job of meeting its 52 to 55 year old specifications. It, it may have been just a little shy on some of the output powers, but it was pretty close to the 1% THD. And the damping factor was off by a bit, but everything except for maybe the Macintosh MC352 that I've tested has never really met the damping requirement. So anyway, it did a real good job of meeting its specifications. This is a nice receiver. If you happen to be at a garage sale or you're looking for something nice and vintage on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or whatever your buying pleasure may be, this one would be a nice little unit to have for the right price. So I think the owner will be very happy to get it back and hopefully they listen to it. I wanted to show some of the things that actually came with it back in you know, 1969 time period, and uh, these are were in the packet. It has the original plastic. Everything came in. It has a caution card. Of course, you have authorized service center card. It might be interesting one day to look up these shops and see if they're still around. How many are still around, if any? Uh, you also have your operating instructions, which is. Uh, you know, color, it's a very nice, you know, color, nice heavy paper material, very well done. And even the service manual uh, is with it, which is great. And then it has some more authorized service stations around the world. I guess the other was authorized service stations 
in the U.S. So for Sansui, and this is actually the service manual. I didn't know this till I saw it, but uh, this would have been nice to have seen before rather than uh, looking at the PDF version I downloaded online from Hi-Fi Engine, which is a great source for schematics and such. But this is really, I mean, Sansui at this time period, they just were killing it in my opinion. So anyway, that is pretty cool to have all that stuff with it. Once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, that would be great. If you like the video, hit the like button, you know that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the appropriate uh, place there. And you will see in the description the email address about uh, leaving just general audio questions, not necessarily so much about this particular video, but just kind of what I do, or maybe a general audio question on vintage kind of stuff maybe. And if I get enough questions, I'll try to do a video on answering those questions. And once again, I thank you for watching. And until next time, have a great day or night.